I'm going to tell you the story about Jeff Collette's last boat. Now Jeff had a, a about a 50 foot, I call it a, it's like a houseboat, but it isn't. It's got nice cabins, <coughs> excuse me, it's got a pilot house, has a flying bridge up above with controls up there. It also is, uh, has a, a set of big refrigerator and a dishwasher, a regular big galley on board. And then in the bow it had seats that curved around so you could sit about five or six people around the bow part. And so this happened to be every year in Fort Lauderdale, around the first weekend of May, they have a big sea and air show put on by the military. And it's quite a show. I bet I've seen it other years. So what we usually do is take the boat out into the, uh, the Fort Lauderdale Harbor and then out through Port Everglades into the ocean. And then you head down, head to the north, and they have a special area set aside by the Coast Guard. They have their Coast Guard boats here and Coast Guard boats out there. And sometimes you'll get a thousand boats anchored out there to watch this air show because the, the airplanes fly right along the beach. And we're, we're between the beach, they're between the beach and the boats that are anchored. So these jets would come right over you and everything would vibrate, you know. So anyhow, I'm just building up the, the, the trip. But that air show was fantastic. And there was a guy out, he's still there, at uh, Polk City, Florida, who has a big air museum, Kermit Weeks. I've been over there, I've met him. And he had a, a B-26 bomber from World War II that he would fly along the, the beach line out in the water. He opened up the bomb bay doors and dropped watermelons in the water <laughs> instead of bombs. Well, anyhow, we started out to take in the air show and we're heading out past the, the jetty at, at Port Everglades and the, and the sea was rough and Jeff was supposed to meet another boat out there where they parked the boats and we said, Jeff, we don't want to go out in that heavy sea. You've got 15 people on board and eight of us are over 80 years old and we don't want to scramble and do all this and that. But he kept on going out and pretty soon we persuaded him to turn the boat around before we got out into the ocean. So we turned around and as we're turning around, the boat threw a propeller. There was no propeller. So we, the waves were taking us up to the shore and it, finally we hit the rocks on the jetty and stuck there and we had, to, we had to get the people off. Now a jetty's made up of big granite boulders as high as this room, but you can kind of get in between them, and, but it's, it's a very difficult thing. And like I say, there were older people on board. Luckily, the whole beach poured out with young people. And they came and lifted all these people over their heads and took them over the, the jetty boulders and put them on their chairs along the beach. In the meantime, the Coast Guard and the, the city police, and the police boats, everybody scrambled over to where we were. And then pretty soon, I'm still on the boat. There are a few of us still on the boat. And they're getting all the older people off. Anyhow, the boat started tilting and was pounding away on the rocks. And then it punched holes into the boat. And then the boat started filling up with water and we're still on board. And it, it was tilted at about 45 degrees to these big boulders. And Renee and I were the last ones off and the water was up to our waist. So we scrambled and I pushed her and helped her out. And I then I jumped onto a boulder and then the boat just slid in the water and sank. 
But before that, Bill Hansen and Ellen Hansen and I forget who else, they left the boat in a hurry. They dove into the water and swam over to a little beach that they could get up on. And, and, uh, and boy, that was a real trip. But the boat sank and then the Coast Guard came along and said, that boat had, that wreckage, and there's stuff floating all over, and of course the main part of the boat was down at the bottom, and it had, he had a new diesel engine on it, and we had to get a hold of a uh, salvage outfit, to, and it was a Sunday, we had to get a salvage outfit to come over and salvage that boat and bring up the wreckage. Well, Jeff and I ran all over town to find a salvage outfit. We found one but they had to have money up front. So we all pulled our credit cards and put them on various credit cards and it cost us $12,000 to get have them come over with a, with a you know, barge and a tow ship and divers. And then the divers will go down and bring up parts and pieces. But anybody in salvage can claim anything that's down there. That's the rule of the, of the sea. If you've gone down, anybody can take anything they want. So they finally got the everything out of there late in the afternoon. We were very, very lucky because the, the penalty on having a, a wreckage like that laying around is $35,000 a day, which is a lot of money. That was the last trip on that boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it was something else. What a trip. <laughs>